you are listening to betterment.com's Tracetheric podcast where we journey to the inside kingdom and unlock esoteric truths within now here is your host from mechanicalmotivation.com marquis taylor hello 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 again this is marquis taylor here from mechanicalmotivation.com as well as www.bettermente.com better mind better people today i want to thank you once again for tuning into today's message and i want to talk about the money mindset this obviously gets me excited and i'm sure it'll get a lot of people excited i'm going to start off talking with a quote from zig ziglar You will get what you want in life if you help enough other people get what they want. End quote. It is a natural law of the universe that the more effectively a person can provide to the masses what they want, the more that same person gets what they individually want. That's why Thomas Edison was so effective in business. He provided the gift of the light bulb to the masses. Same for Henry Ford's Model T automobile. The same can be said for Andrew Carnegie, Warren Buffett, and Steve Jobs. They provided a service to the masses. They provided the masses with what they wanted. And they eventually got what they also internally wanted for themselves. Mastering the money mindset requires a deep, consistent thought. We are exposed so much to the idea that having money means that family is second or that helping people and contributing society is on the back burner once amassing large sums of money there are plenty of wealthy people who are humble and generous enough to contribute to society more than just their business services just like there are also poverty there's also people in poverty who are unkind selfish and full of anger towards the world So the main differentiation that I've come to observe between America's 1% of income earners and the other 99% is clarity. People who have an entrepreneurial mindset have a clear vision of exactly what they intend their future to look like. They also do not allow anything to block their vision either. I was just listening to Tony Robbins talk about how just by having a plan set out, a clear plan set out on how to achieve your goal has automatically just separated you from the rest of the group, the rest of the people out there, majority of people out there by like 50%. You're 50, you're 50 percent more likely to succeed right then and there just by making a plan. And Jim Rohn stated that success is something that you attract by becoming an attractive person. So to have a clear vision of what your goals are, then you have to couple that with the tenacity to pursue that goal relentlessly. That's an attractive trait of being a leader. And that's one of the traits you need to have in order to attract a lot of money into your lifestyle as well as just helping others. Because there's so many different forms of payment. Payment doesn't necessarily come in the form of money. But since we're focusing on the money mindset here, this is the the main pinnacle to focus on. So for me also, I personally have met very well-educated homeless people. They have a positive mindset and plenty of powerful ideas to share with the world, yet they do not act on it. That is another trait that people are generally attracted to someone who takes action and does it as soon as they possibly can so many of those homeless people may have all this wealth and all this knowledge and have all these positive vibes to give to the world but they're not actually doing it you know they're it's just it's it's potential that's untapped and that's why they say the richest place in the world is a graveyard is filled with ideas that were never pursued it's filled with potential it's filled with so much passion it never was manifested into reality so now we're going to get into this particular topic that i like to talk about why see the glass of milk as half full or half empty when one can always add more milk the glass is not the source of milk in the first place ray higdon talks about how we live in a society of or statements this is an issue 
People are thinking of scarcity and boundaries instead of abundance and limitlessness. When choosing between your family or money, what would you choose? Why choose between one or the other when you can and deserve both? Besides, how can one adequately support their family in the society without an abundance of money? Really break that down. Think about it. In today's society, the, the new the new hundred dollars is a thousand dollars. So we seriously have to shift our way of thinking and have to attract more money into our lifestyle in order to overcome the rate of inflation and the taxes that we are going to be faced with in coming days. All the numbers are there economically. It all makes sense. It, I read a book about how an economy grows and why it doesn't. It's a very powerful concepts. A very simple book. I totally recommend anyone to go check it out. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I get that right for you all. Again, that's How an Economy Grows and Why It Doesn't by Erwin Schiff. You can literally look this up on YouTube and it will read it out loud to you with the pictures and words. It's a it's a children's book, but it explains very powerful fundamental concepts because a lot of the economic downturns happen because everyone's purse. It's a collective of everyone's personal economy. If people focus more on their own personal economies instead of the global economy as a whole, they could increase their personal economy enough to where it starts to affect the global economy on a massive scale. So it, the big thing is focusing on our personal economy and how we can increase that and add to it. And the book goes into all types of different details, but that's something that really shifted my way of thinking. And I just want to end basically with the idea that as human beings, we should love ourselves enough to give ourselves the opportunity to live life as abundantly as we desire to. You know, in the Bible, it says that we came into this world abundantly and we should be leaving this world abundantly. This is how I see it. And it makes perfect sense to me. To I, and there's nothing wrong with having self-interest, self-love, wanting to make more of yourself and add value to who you are. There is no limit to money by Adding money to you, you're not taking money from people because there's no limit to money available in the world. We create it. It's there. And money's literally a manifestation of a product or a service you provide to others. If you provide a service to someone, you should be justly compensated for that. Bottom line, period. That's how things work. And I'm going to give you another perspective to try to explain exactly why it's all about helping the masses basically think about Beyonce really good example Beyonce might produce one song or one album every year or so and then that album only sells for ten dollars okay now you got Beyonce now today and you have Beethoven back in 1800s so we both know they're both very talented at their craft so to speak However, during the time frame of Beethoven, he wasn't able to share his music with the masses on the scale that Beyonce could. And she also obviously didn't have technology on her side or his side, excuse me, because technology wasn't advanced enough. However, because she's able to do that, provide a service to the masses, even if she only sells it for ten dollars, she's selling this to millions of people. She's providing that service of music and music is a very serious service that should not be overlooked because music entices a certain energy and gives people a certain feeling. It, it creates a certain frequency for them that they can really connect with. And that is the service that's provided, even if it's not a, a tangible service. So when she does that, even though she's only getting a percentage of that even if it's only 10 percent 10 percent of 10 million dollars is pretty nice and that's just from one album beethoven on the other hand didn't have that luxury even though his music was phenomenal and very critically acclaimed they, he wasn't able to serve as many people during his span in his career 
And you can even look at, even break it down differently in closer time frames. There's Sammy Sosa and then there's Babe Ruth. You know, Babe Ruth provided entertainment to people through baseball. Sammy Sosa did the same thing, but Sammy Sosa provided entertainment to more people due to technology. So the ultimate goal is to help the masses. They asked the great teacher of life, how can one achieve greatness? And the teacher responded, find a way to serve the many for service to many leads to greatness. And that's fundamentally one of the main focal points of cultivating the money mindset. People have to learn to basically in a nutshell, if you serve the classes, you will live among the masses. And if you serve the masses, you will live among the classes. So perfect example is a mechanic. The mechanic might do a $500 repair, but they only probably get in 50 repairs a week. If they're lucky, if they're lucky, that's, that's some good money right there. So they're serving 50 people at $500 a week. That's goodness, $25,000. Whereas, you know, again, Beyonce is serving millions of people or not even Beyonce, just, you know, a, a show on YouTube. They what's that new song that came out? Uh, what is it? Cl uh, closer, closer by the Chainsmokers. It's it's sitting at a, a nice, I think, what, one point seven billion views on YouTube. And they did it one time. They recorded that one time all the way through and then shared it with the masses in today's age of technology not to utilize it is <laughs> not the wisest decision hence why you see me even recording this right now because i know i can serve the masses and it will return in abundance that's just the law and i'm doing this out of the fact that i enjoy it but i also have a goal in mind for myself and that's what matters to me. And it, it, I have goals of being able to provide for my family, my mother. I want to be able to invent the things I want to invent. I want to donate to the charities I want to donate and build the things I want to build for myself and others. I want to do that. And I want to also be an example of that to others. So just learning to serve the masses. That's one of the main things about it. So I just want to go over a really quick synopsis of everything because, you know, I kind of jumped around here and there, but I'll just hit these ideas a little bit harder. First off, obviously, provide to the masses. People need to know that Bill Gates didn't invent the MSOS operating system. He bought the rights to the system and built the Microsoft brand around it. Now, he definitely had some serious programming skills, yes, but he's not the originator, originator of, excuse me, the MS OS operating system. And Henry did not invent the automobile. He invented the assembly line. Thomas Edison didn't invent the light bulb. He invented GE, General Electric. He created that network around there. And so the concept is not understanding you don't need to have a phenomenal idea. Your idea can be as phenomenal as you want it to be. If you don't share it with the masses, if you don't develop a network of people to share it with and plug people into, it, it won't be attracting any money into your life. And remember that this requires deep, constant just thought. You can't just, you, you can't just think about it once. It has to be a consistent thing. And once again, there are, I'm not saying there's no corrupt wealthy people there's no no you know perfect poor people either they exist at both sides of the spectrum and what people should understand and this is this is what warren buffett said he said if you're a terrible person before you make a lot of money you're going to be a terrible person after you make a lot of money money doesn't change you it just makes you more of who you are I mean, just think about it. If someone out there who's a kind hearted soul receives a million dollars, that kind hearted soul doesn't mean they're going to just automatically start becoming a terrible person, snobby. No, they would have had to already be snobby the whole time prior to receiving the millions of dollars. 
So the, the, the concept of understanding that money doesn't make you terrible. It just makes you more of who you are. Many people love to give time to help others, but wouldn't f it feel better to provide a service to the masses, generate a massive income from that service, and then give that income away abundantly every day? Would it not be better to live an abundant life on 10% of your income and give away the other 90? Nonprofits have plenty of volunteers, but not enough money. I know this because I have well over 1,500 volunteer hours in my lifetime thus far, and every time, every time, it's always more of a money issue than there is a hands-on deck issue. Also, just touching on it a little bit more, having a clear vision, pursuing it relentlessly, literally staking everything you possibly can and mustering up all the energy you can to attract that into your life with the plan that you have set for yourself. And it's okay if your plan isn't perfect at first. Having a plan is what matters most because now that you have a plan, you can refine it as you go and learn. And so just remember to have an abundance mentality. Don't look at the glass as half full or half empty. Know the milk never even came from the glass in the first place. And you can always get more milk. And the abundance mentality is a game changer. Again, thank you everyone for tuning in. And I'm excited. Obviously, we got a lot more things still going on and making more podcasts here and there. Be sure to check out my boy Brandon Christopher over on the Better Mente podcast. He's dropping some serious, serious esoteric knowledge over there. It's fire. And you also check out the collective of all of these podcasts on www.bettermente.com. Again, that's www.bettermente.com. And I am very glad that you all are listening because <laughs> Brandon's going to blow this up, okay? And I'm very confident that I'm going to blow this up. We're going to keep producing things. It's going to be huge. And uh, that was not meant to be a, a, a Trump pun right there, <laughs> but it kind of sounded like it. Um, anyways, have a good evening. Be safe. Take it easy.